Welcome back. We had a little technical issues on the last video, but we promised you we'd bring you in onto the to, with the Ferrari. What I want Tom to do is literally take you through a crash course in how he uses his product since he was the formulator and developer of it. So Tom, to get started with, we've got this Ferrari. We're not gonna do this before and after comparison because this Ferrari is unique in the context of where it's headed, who's gonna pay for it, all that stuff. What I wanna highlight is some of the attributes of his unique product line. So for the heavy lifting, as a rule, we start with a wool cutting pad and a rotary polisher. Yes. So we're using a cordless Milwaukee rotary polisher. This is your backing plate, yes. which is a dedicated backing plate made specifically for your dedicated pads. Now you have two pads. You have a traditional wool and it's made from wool, but it's also a four ply pad, correct? Yes. Okay, which is a quality pad. But you have, wait for it, there's, there's more. You have what's called a low linting pad. Yes. So you have options. So what I thought I would have you do is demonstrate it first with this. So let's just cut to the chase in this moment. We have uh, moved your ceramics into this handy dispenser. So how, let's, let's just keep it simple. What is the basic operating procedure we're so, gonna do, we're gonna accept that we're gonna do some heavy lifting. Yep. How do we approach this? Um, you know, in the body shop industry, everything's about time. I mean, time, 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 time. The the guys in the body shop normally don't care about fuzz, but every once in a while you get somebody who's like, oh, I can't have fuzz. Okay, I have to use foam. Okay, well, this is something in between using foam to cut, which you know we have that too. Yes. But this pad is gives you the same aggressive rate as a wool pad uh, that a body shop wants so that we get this job done fast. But it does it um, a little bit cleaner because this is called a pre-washed pad. Oh. The wool is washed. Okay. That's what makes it into low lint. Any experienced guy knows that you get a brand new wool pad and they're just flinging lint everywhere. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah, so they just wash it before in the manufacturing process. Then they dye it so that we know the difference. Right, and visually you know, can instantly tell the difference. Yeah, and we have both pads available okay. you know, for sale, the blue or the, the wool, the white wool. So let's get into it. How do you approach it? Because I know you have a very systematic approach yeah. and this is what I call laying the rules. And then if you want to break the rules, that's in your world. But this is how Tom teaches it. So in my industry, you know, and I was taught by everybody, you know, 3M, McGuire's, whoever, you know, yeah. taught, they all came into my shop, but I enjoyed having them come in and teach the guys. Um, this way is a little bit different and it is very specific. I want the guys who I teach to put our product on the pad, right in the middle of that pad. That way, because this is truly a water-based product, um, it smells different than all the rest. Um, it doesn't have that solvent, you know, nasty smell. Right. And it won't get sticky on the surface. Even yeah. though this is a super hot day, um, this surface which well is well over part of Yes, which is part of why I want to, just based on my experience, I'd probably rate this panel right now about 135 degrees, yep. just based on my experience. Yep. That's pretty hot. So, okay, so waterborne tech, so because I've clarified with you, this, the carrier is truly water. Truly water. Unlike the other carrier or other products that may have water in them, mm -hmm. so they can say it's water technology, but when it comes down to it, water's not the true carrier. It's gonna be more solvents that's the true carrier. That's right. So it's the water that is the carrier that allows us to work in direct sunlight. That's right. Now, now granted, most of you are not going to want to do it in the direct sunlight because, as I say, it's always easier on a shaded, cool surface, yeah. but I just want to show the versatility and unique factor of this product line, which is wow. So as a mobile detailer, that means something to me. Okay, so right in the center, and I notice in the body shop world, you guys go counter to the detailing world, which is you never go up on an edge as a beginner, but you're saying like, no, we accept that we're going to cut with an edge, but then we're going to finish it out. So let's see how you, okay. you approach that. So. Um, Just keep talking. One of the ways that uh, you know everybody's been taught, put it on the surface and then smear it around. The problem with that chemically 
is that when you expose the product to the elements outside, it, you're going to get more evaporation. Well, these products are expensive. Um, why waste them? So I don't want my guys wasting time or product. The product, you noticed, was on the pad. We push to the middle, and now, now the product is in the pad. There's going to be less evaporation with the product in the pad. Now, come right up on edge. It's okay. Three o'clock. And you notice, this is three o'clock. This is 12 o'clock. Wherever this is, is 12 o'clock. Go to three o'clock. Come right up on edge. And then you do all your cutting. Right up on edge. It's fine. Now, what if I need more product? Go back to the middle. That pad has product in the middle. Now I just loaded the surface again. Come up on edge and wipe it off. Go back to the middle, put more product down, come up on edge, and do your cutting. This way, we're staying very efficient, and we're doing all the cutting that we need. That is cool. Okay, I stopped the camera so we could do a little switching around. So Tom, you went up on an edge, you cut it. Now, as a detailer, what I would say, if I was teaching a guy, a beginner, and meaning I'm not going to be teaching a guy with 30 years of experience as a rule unless he just can't get it. So typically it's going to be beginners. So I would tell a guy, okay, you want to go up on an edge to do the heavy lifting. So the wool pad is going to do the heavy lifting. That's what you do, but then I want to finish it and flatten it out and remove because now what I'm trying to address is the swirl marks, the hologramming, the buffer trails, call it whatever you want and I would then uh, transition from on an edge to do the heavy lifting to a flat, but you're saying that that's not a requirement. It's, it's not a requirement. It, okay. I understand from teaching point, it's awesome, because yeah. now we're teaching process to somebody who, you know, is just learning process in the whole game. Right. Um, so, yes, you're 100% right, um, but to somebody who's experienced, the CSI ceramic product can make that change by just going to the next pad. And let me just clarify something for people. This ceramics, and it's not in its dedicated normal uh, container, it is not a compound. Compound kills your paint. <laughs> we are going to discuss that and dissect that topic. So this is truly a polish yes. with abrasives that are all uniform mm -hmm. in size. Yep. It's very different, totally unique than that diminishing abrasive technology that most of you have been taught is the, the end all, you know, but it's just not. Sometimes it is until it isn't. And this is that moment where, guess what guys, we've been misinformed, there is better technology. So that's what's cool about this is there's not all this flexibility, which has always confused me. It's like diminishing, well how fast do I know if it's diminishing or not diminishing? Mm -hmm. This is consistent. So what that said is, you're saying, okay, Darren, that makes sense, but it's not a requirement. So I like that because now we're back to the speed. Mm -hmm. I want to cut to the chase because the, the less time that's required of me, that makes me more profitable. Yes. So I don't necessarily have to raise my prices. I can just be more efficient. So you're telling me that you can go straight from working up on an edge and now you can switch it to a, your red foam pad. Okay, so let's, let's switch it out. And you take it from here, explain right once again. Center. Okay, right in the center. Okay, right in the center. Right in the center. And then you go right flat on the surface, just like we did with the, uh, the wool pad. <clears throat> and uh, inject it up into the foam. Slow down your speed once you start to get the conversion. Okay, clarify conversion. Because that's a term that is not used in my industry. What I talk about is you're scratching your way to perfection. Yep. You're introducing mm -hmm. finer and finer scratches until you have what, it's kind of a hyped up term, but optical clarity. Yep. So you're saying you're converting. Mm -hmm. So it's different terminology. I want to clarify that for the, the audience. It's, it's the same. So thing you're converting that... deep scratches to smaller and smaller scratches, right? Or even um, uh, less scratches, okay. to more scratches. 
and finer, yeah, finer and more. In a given area, okay. If I can put more scratches, it's going to be higher resolution, and we relate that to TV screens. Yes, 720, 1080, 4K. 8K. All of that was is within a given area. You have more scratches, okay. more lines. But I just area. okay. So that is the difference, though, is because we could actually, and and my brain is processing this because it's. I'm trying to combine the world of auto body with the world of detailing because there's so many parallels. But the the way you guys talk, the way you are taught. And the way you have to operate, the constraints are, are very different than my world. Mm -hmm. So you can you want to put in more lines of revolution resolution, mm -hmm. which are finer lines. Because yeah. really, if your space is constrained to this, let's say it's a flat screen, we'll 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 follow that metaphor down the trail. So we got a flat screen TV. There's only a limited number of lines that you can put that are this thick. Mm -hmm. So let's say that screen will take 80 lines, which is resolution. So if we thin those lines and make them finer and finer and finer, we can fit more lines of resolution into that picture, hence 1080 to 4K. Now, so that's what you're converting. The, the big thing, and here's where we're totally different than old-fashioned compound like you were talking about before, diminishing abrasive. Absolute nonsense that they taught us. Absolute, absolute, positively nonsense. I want to inject something. As a body shop. Okay. You and I were speaking the other day, and you said something because occasionally you, you throw out these nuggets that seem trivial to you, and it's just like, whoa, stop the press, Tom. Because you said if the industry had produced a product that actually worked, you would still be in the Absolutely. auto body industry. I would be. And I thought, Okay, that's pretty significant in my world. And and that was the 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 catalyst behind you being so frustrated. It's like this is not working and now I can't replicate it. It's like McDonald's. It's like, "Hey, you take this frozen meat patty, you throw it on this grill that's been heated up to 350 degrees, 30 seconds, you set a timer, you flip it over 30 seconds. It's been dumbed down to the point that you could teach a monkey to do it. So you were frustrated because you had 30 employees and it's like, oh my gosh, how come the industry can't produce a product that is better than what they're doing? They're just giving me crap. So that's what I find like, whoa, stop the press moment. If it wasn't for your own frustration and the industry that's been around for decades that they still can't get it right, that you decided, okay, I guess I'm gonna have to be that guy. So you got it right. At least all indicators suggest that in my world, and this is what I'm trying to highlight to them. Occasionally, when a company says they're unique, occasionally it is true. They are unique. It's just that every, every company wants to say they're unique. But in fact, are they truly unique? So here we are, direct sunlight, uh, going back to where we left off. You were up on an edge. You're saying it's not a requirement. But I get it. There's a lot of fear and anxiety with beginners. So. We would flatten that out. We're going to skip that part because now Tom's going to show us like, hey, you don't have to do that. We can be more efficient. Well, one of the ways like you were talking about flattening out the wool and that's absolutely positively gives you a better, a higher gloss rate if you flatten out the wool because, you know, the pad becomes less aggressive. Yes. And your So your on the edge, port. more aggressive, perfectly flat, less aggressive. And that's what I mean about flattening out those and holograms. It, it, it has to do with the torque curve on this pad. On the edge, obviously, I'm going to have a lot of torque up there. I'm going to be able to dig, dig, dig. I don't want that. Not when we're talking about a lot of arc. friction. Yeah. When we get to the center, less torque. Yeah. So let's get back to the center. Now, that would be the normal process with a diminishing abrasive crazy system. With a non-diminishing system, I can get up on edge, dig out that Rotational See, mark. there's a term no one would ever use in a detailing word, dig out. <laughs> I, because you're doing this all microscopic. Yeah. Then go to flat. You always want to finish flat with foam. Yeah. But you can dig up on edge with the foam and then convert to flat and always finish flat. Now, one thing I want to say is if we were using um, diminishing abrasives, old fashioned, yeah. still out there. Still, right? yeah, they're People still producing still it. Yeah. Stuff. Um, if you were doing that, 
it is 100% impossible because they're basically irregular shapes. Yeah. It would be I've never understood that. Yeah, it's just different sized boulders. One big rock, little rocks all mixed together. And How do you, you know? There's no come, control. No, no control. And what, you want it to come out good on a Ferrari? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You're going to have to cover it up with glaze. Yeah. That's the process. Compound, polish. Oh, yeah. And what we don't get? Covered up with glaze. Glaze. I just need it out of my shop. Yeah. Well, then the customer calls back with the Ferrari and says, hey, Get back out here. Fix yes. Start. Now I'm doing it for free. Yes. Ah, how's this happening? So, with diminishing abrasives, that is impossible. With non diminishing abrasives, like what we are, now I can get to perfectly, um, like you were talking about TVs. When the lines on the TV, they're all exactly the same. If it's 1080, those are lines are all exactly all the same. Precisionly. Precision. Yes. Yeah. So now we can get the optic that we want because the lines are all the same yeah and that's what we're doing okay we're putting the same lines in just making them finer and finer so w before you do that i want to inject something very critical so hold that thought as my side note because i know someone out there saying like oh my gosh they're in the direct sunlight 135 degree paint <laughs> and now he's got polish not compound polish on that paint that's going to clearly uh, uh, harden up and be cement-like in nature, yep. but yet you and I both know that's not the case. Yep. So, what? Let's just kind of clarify that. Where you can introduce water to the pad, it reactivates it. That's kind of what I call it. Yep. I don't know if that's going off the radar for you, but just kind of clarify that moment of how it's possible we can be in direct sunlight, and this polish is now drying. I don't know if it's totally dry, but it's on the paint. Yep. I mean, I mean, I'd be in, in, in fear mode as a detailer because I don't want my polish to sit on the paint like that, yeah. especially in direct sunlight. Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest things in the body shop is it's hard. It's really, really hard work. So the guys are buffing. Lunch comes along. They should leave the car. Oh, yes. Now, if that was old fashioned compound, I, I'd be coming out because I'm staying at the shop yes. while they're gone. Right. And I see this stuff laying on the surface and I am flipping out. You come unglued. Just, Oh my gosh, now I'm working while they're at lunch. But why do you come unglued? Because, because you I know, know it's going to ruin the car. Yes. It's going to seriously hurt that car. In fact, if you're using a compound, let's call let's just kind of simplify this moment. You can call it whatever you want. If you're using a compound or polish because so many of those are made with with these really bad heavy solvents, that will literally bubble the paint. If I was to put a, just a line, a bead of line here, of your choice of compound or polish, let it bake in the sun. I come and I chisel it off or wipe it off, whatever it takes to get it off. I will see the paint actually domed up and <laughs> bubbled right. up. Swelled up. Yep. It's, so, yep. in fact, when I was training Sean, which if you've been following along for any length of time, Sean is the guy that I'm mentoring. He did. He started polishing on the car because I was teaching him, and then he wanted to ask me some questions. And in my head, I'm going, "Okay, Sean, uh, you can't do this." And it, was, it, it wasn't a moment that I was actually afraid it was going to work. What I wanted him to be aware of is that moving forward, Sean, you're going to be tempted to try other products. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> but what you need to know is that there's danger in that moment. So if you just apply compound directly to a panel and then you stop to have lunch or, or have a talk, whatever, and now you come in and think you're just going to resume where you left off, it's like, dude, you're going to be in trouble. Unless, of course, you're using clear coat solutions. Yep. And that's what I wanted to highlight. So in this case, like, let's show them that it's not like rock hard I mean, on the surface. Without water, it, it cleans up really nice. Bingo. When you, you can see we got a little bit of dust right there. But when you put a little bit of water on there, oh, man, it's so nice. It's just, wow. it's just your spit shine that is whole area <laughs> that is impressive <laughs> i mean i know this but because I, I i truly do love this as it kicks my ass but i do love it so i still have these moments where i, I wet myself continually because i just love it it's like oh my gosh who doesn't love paint that that feels this silky smooth and looks that good so i still get a charge out of it so excuse my little moment there so it's it's that simple okay with that said that's enough of that sidebar Let's switch to the red foam pad and let's take it off. You, you, you did the heavy lifting with the low linting cutting pad. Mm -hmm. So where do you go from here? Um, if 
because it is warm out here and if I'm and, and when you say warm let's just hot. clarify it's hot yeah, it's I'm, hot. I'm, I'm I can feel yeah. that it drips yeah. down my back yeah, it's, it's hot. hot so let's say you're stuck in front of somebody's house and you're doing this detail work and you've got a rotary but you also have an oscillating tool I would kiss this. okay oscillating in my world DA. dual action dual, dual action. action so a DA in your world and you I call would, oscillating I would kiss this with a DA and it that's going to be perfect. Okay. You don't need to use the rotary with the foam. Right. You can just go wool right to DA with the red foam. Okay. And be done. But for this case, since we started with the rotary, let's yeah. see you finish it with okay. a rotary. And then we can also just demonstrate for okay. giggles the, the dual action. Okay. So what would you do at this point? Um, Let's put a little bit more on, just, and it's not going to take very much, just a drop. Okay. Um, and that little bit. Okay, and see, this is where we actually, you already did kiss mm -hmm. this. And yeah. when you say kiss, it's just a subtle, like, hey, we're not doing heavy lifting here. We're just now what I call finessing it, yes. nuancing the moment. Okay, so you put it still in the middle, go for it. Stay flat. We've already done all the cutting we need. Get as slow as you can with this rotary. I'm looking for as high a gloss finish as I can get. Okay, define as slow as possible. What would be the approximate RPMs for that, Tom? With this tool, it's gonna to go down to 600 RPM. Okay. And I, I want it down that far. Really, 600? Yeah, hey, as a rule, I teach guys 800. Okay. That's usually what I teach guys. Actually, it is 800, isn't it? I thought this tool went to six. No, right, this. You're uh, right. This tool only goes to eight. That's perfect. But because most rotaries have a soft start, you can actually finesse the 800 down even uh, less than that with the trigger, yeah. if you wanted to. So you're just you're just finessing it. You're nuancing it. Because right now you're trying to go from 1080 resolution to 4K resolution. Is that a correct statement? Yep, and when you're working in the sun like this, it's so nice because I'm looking into the sun reflection and it's just getting liquid. I mean, the surface is just wet. Yeah, I'm waiting for a drip to come off of that paint because it looks so wet now. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. It's just beautiful. And the, the product's not getting sticky. It's, it's still cutting, it's still changing that gloss rate. So, okay, so you just finessed it, you fine-tuned it. How would you literally approach it at this point? Would you just wipe it off? Would you in introduce some water? What would you do? Yeah, just water. Um, and would that be... Everything is about testing. Okay, I so... I see what I have, exactly what's here. Would what you're doing right now moving forward would it be different because we're in direct sunlight versus the shade or would that just be maybe you'd use more water because of direct sunlight hot paint versus oh. less like would anything be different no it would be the same in the shade the only problem is in the shade i'm not going to be able to see the microscopic scratches unless i have a really nice detail area with led lights all over well that's what i was just going to add in my world that's where we bust out led lights in fact we're gonna turn off all the ambient lighting and we're gonna turn on our very specific LED lighting so that we can, at a level, what we're trying to do is enhance it and, and not truly magnify it, but, but magnify it so you can see like, okay, I'm gonna scrutinize this now with an LED light so that when it gets out in the sun, it's gonna look flawless. But here in the sun, we can see what we're getting. We can see exactly what we're producing. And there's, I mean, this is a sexy red Ferrari. This is where this car has to look good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the sun, when they're driving up to dinner or wherever they're right. going with this car, it has to look really good. So we want to make sure that, you know, and when I hit this with water, it's going to give me, a, you know, what, everything is what you can see right now. That's, I don't want it to be fake. Right. If I miss something, oh, well, I missed it. Let's do it again. Yeah, right. And you're just, so you want to verify which is normal, trust but verify. So you trust the process and your polish, but you still have to verify. Sure. But here in the sun, it's easier to verify because at a level, or in most cases, this is where people are going to be viewing their beautiful Ferrari is in the sun, not scrutinizing it with an LED in their garage because they've got nothing better to do. Yeah. Okay. Exactly.
So you would literally just wipe it off just or a little okay. Bit of water, just a tiny little bit. Just wipe it with a clean microfiber towel. And then, you know, if it if you see any little tiny scratches, then you would go over it more. But if it's good to go, then you know we'll move on to waxing or okay. quick detail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, and this is not a end all, this is perfection moment, a before and after. This is just letting guys know the essentials of how to use the product. Some of the key points as to why this product truly is unique. So, I mean, you're just gonna have to take my word for it because I never know what's gonna get captured on camera. It's, it's, a, 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 it's such an agonizing experience for me where it's like, oh my gosh, what is going on with the camera? That was not there in real life. And that's where if you're performing at that level of scrutiny, you, I do recommend that you scrutinize it in sunlight as well as pull it in the shade and scrutinize it with an LED light if you're getting paid for that level of perfection. So right now my eyes, like I'm, you know, I'm getting physically aroused just looking at that panel. How about that? We'll just, we, I won't get any more crass than that, but I'm getting physically aroused just looking at that. Yes, it's a red Ferrari. So is there anything else at this point? Let's say you, you have achieved desired results. Yep. Now you could finish it with a quick detailer, a spray wax, yep. which are all waterborne based chemical, uh, uh, formulations that yep. you developed, right? Yep, we can do it all right here in the sun and just wrap up so, this car. Okay, so let's just sun. test that real quickly. Let, just let's just go to finish moment. So you just cleaned it up with water. At this point, you, in my eyes say you could actually deliver it. But with that said is let's just introduce once again. So we have the quick detailer, yep. waterborne technology. You can use it in direct sunlight. It's non-staining. So how would you apply that in this moment? On your microfiber or directly on the surface, um, if you spray it on the microfiber, you're just gonna wipe it off. You can see it's, it's leaving a little bit of residue behind. This, I call it a conditioner for waxing. Don't wipe it, don't finish that. You can see that it, we've put a product yeah, on the surface. Yeah, there's a little there's haze a little going on. Okay, this, this is, is, this is interesting, okay. So let's define conditioner though. So when you say condition, because I, I've talked with you enough and I have enough experience with your products where I would actually call this a primer. primer. As in, exactly. you're laying a pre, a, 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 if I was to try to explain this to a novice, I'd say, okay, what we wanna do is we want to bond this wax That's as much right. as possible to that paint so I could go straight with a wax and it would be perfectly suitable. Yep. But let's say I want to prime it and bond it better uh, between the paint and the wax. Yep. So that's what you just did is you applied a primer, yep. which is called a Q7 detailer. Yep. Okay. So by doing that, um, and I'm sure the, everybody's had this situation happen, when you put wax on some surfaces, it kind of repels. Yes. Because those, products, whatever's on there. Don't co-mingle very well. Yeah, they, so then are you really getting any adhesion? All of our base chemistry is the same. The base chemistry of everything we have is all the same, yeah. everything. So they're all compatible. Use the Q7 detailer. Go for, I'm gonna interject in a moment, go and for then it. Spray the microfiber or the, um, the Q7 wax on the microfiber. Okay. This is important. So Let you applied the Q7 detailer, it hazed up, you did not remove the haze, now you're immediately going in with the Q7 wax directly on top of the detailer. Yep, and you can see it's totally, totally hazing up. up. Um, let it, Which, let it by the way, is where I break the rules. <laughs> I will spray and I'll wipe, that's how I apply it. Well, here's, here's one of the things, um, when you're talking about the chemistry, and, yeah. and that's what, you know, that's what wax is. That's the difference between the wax and the detailer. The wax has carnauba in it, which is the protection. The quick detailer uses other products for protection. It doesn't have the protection that the wax has. Okay. The wax, because it's carnauba, that will give, and that's what we get the hazing. Happening. Okay. 
I want all of the carriers, all of whatever's in there to dry out. I well, really to clarify, to because we did uh, specifically say the carrier is in fact water. Yep. So when you say carrier, you're saying you want that water to evaporate 100%. 100%. Okay. I want it gone. See, now, that's where I'm continuing to learn. This is like, okay, now that makes sense. Before, I just thought, oh, that's just like going through additional steps that I don't want to go through. Is there some logic and sound reasoning behind that? So you've just explained it. You want that water to evaporate as it, much as it possible. It needs to go away. Now, <clears throat> to any of the body shop guys that are watching this, they're going to relate, I hope they can relate, to the solvent base coats that we've all used to the new water base coats. If you touch water base coat before it's fully dried, it's reversible with water. That's a real problem. If you allow that base coat to fully, you know, cure, or do what it needs to do before you put the clear on it, it's not reversible any longer with water because the carrier is gone, so it's no longer reversible. This is no longer reversible with water. You can wash this car, the carrier's gone, all you have on here is true Carnuba products, now it'll last for a long, long time. You're gonna have a really good lasting Carnuba finish on this surface okay. because the carrier is gone. Okay, so just to reiterate, because when you were speaking that, my mind thought, wait a minute, it almost sounded like Tom said that if you don't allow the stuff to evaporate completely, it could be a real problem, and, and you were talking directly to like body shop technicians. Mm -hmm. So to put it in my own understanding, if you were just to quickly apply this, not allow for as much evaporation as possible, because obviously ambient humidity is gonna be a factor sure. in that. Absolutely. So that's one of those moving parts that is gonna be unique to your world and your situation. And you're just gonna to have to respond accordingly. So the goal is to allow the carrier water to evaporate as much as possible mm -hmm. so that it, and I like to use your metaphor, which is latex paint, mm -hmm. because when we, I mean, I'm old enough, like yourself, where we grew up with oil-based everything, mm -hmm. solvent-based everything, and that was the, 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 the best. And then they wanted to push water stuff onto us. It's like, well, water can't surely, there's no way that could be better than oil. <laughs> oil is better because it's more resistant, it's, it's harder to work with, so it must be better. So, but that's where we could introduce the whole, you know, VOCs, regulations, whatever. Point being is that you want it to evaporate, so latex paint, it's water-based. While it's still wet, it's water-soluble, which means you can go under the sink and you can rinse it off. Yeah, and, but off if you let it dry, <laughs> now yeah. the water's not gonna do anything to it. That's right. So that's what you're trying to create exactly. here is a, uh, a lasting mm -hmm. foundation, yeah. which is why you're allowing it to evaporate, yeah. the, the carrier water. Okay. And, and we all know that 10 years ago even, allowing wax to dry on the surface. Oh, a total no-no. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're gonna have this. Yeah. But now, yes, that's what it's made <laughs> You for. would break out the chisel, <laughs> yeah. and then if, even if you got it off here mostly, and you really wouldn't, yeah. because you'd come back a day later and you'd find areas that were still, yeah. you know, rock hard. Never mind the seams. Ooh. The seams, you'd be like, oh my gosh, what a nightmare. So yes, okay. So now fold up the towel flat, and then you wanna break it loose. Once you break it loose, the product will build into the towel and self-clean the whole area. I always want to flip the towel to the, the cleanest area and then just wipe it off lightly and it's just beautiful. Okay, with that said is let's pretend that we're working in Florida and the humidity is hovering around 85 to 95 percent. So let's say that I'm a detailer and I'm out working and I have become, I've decided to test out your products and I'm seeing the performance of them and I'm in love with it. But now I have this situation because as I tell guys, nothing is created equal. So we have a Ferrari, they use a specific paint. And by the way, that paint that they're using this year may be supplied by a different manufacturer next year. Mm -hmm. So there's all these moving pieces that we just cannot control. So let's say that they have uh, an appearance now that's not completely uniform due to heat, direct sunlight, humidity. Is there some additional techniques that yes. they can use to finesse that moment? So when you're working in high humidity, and this goes to especially the, the body shop guys that are watching, 
we all know that in the spray booth, when we started using water-based paints, we had to have additional fanage put into the spray booth. There's the word, fanage. Yeah, they, you just... <laughs> you got to keep the air... We have external fans inside of a booth that's sucking air out. Yeah. Because you need air movement. Right. Same here. If, if you're in a super high humidity area, you need air movement. You need that air rushing across your okay, flow. and evaporating that water. Let's say I was working indoors. Would you literally a recommend a, putting a fan? Yep, wow, that Put goes completely counter yep. to what we're taught. Put a fan, you need to dry this. Okay. One, I want the protection. Yes. I want that carnauba to give me that hard shell. Okay. And the only way- Even at 135, it's probably 140 now it's because hot. it's getting yeah. hotter. The sun is, uh, you know, getting at, at yeah. full noon. Yeah. So even at that temperature, that wax, is not going to it works for man i mean i've tested this i'm really playing devil's advocate in this moment because i i when when you first introduced this to me 15 plus years ago it blew my mind it went so counter to everything you can use it on black trim it's like no you can't tom you can use it in direct sunlight no you can't tom you can let it dry and it's not going to uh, uh go, go to a rock hard type or a cement like uh material it's like no it won't none of that's true it's like yes it is darren you know why it's called chemistry and i developed it oh what like 20 years ago and, and that's where i just say to the industry it's like really industry like what took you so long and i that's a that's a rhetorical question because i know what, what's taking them so long it's, it's all about separating us from our money so you break all the rules and i'm a big fan of breaking the rules that don't make sense. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. the rule of law, yep. but I don't like the rules that just are based on some whimsical, <laughs> arbitrary, hidden agenda. That's what I don't like. Yeah. So this can be used in direct sunlight. You, you want air flowage to evaporate as much as possible, but let's say they're doing all that. I don't know if you've ever come across a situation and they still have to finesse it. How would I finesse this no, moment? It, if it I... really works fine. If, okay. if they wipe it off a little bit too soon, they're gonna get splotchy spots. And okay. I tell them, just re-wax it, let it dry, walk away, do the whole car, then come back to the okay. panel you started on. And, and in our mind, we don't wanna let it dry. It, we're like, I know what yeah. I saw him do, but it's going to be a problem for me. I know it will. But then they wipe it off too soon. And it's like, no, you wiped it off too soon. Okay. Let it hard okay. shell on there. Okay. And then cool. what you do, it comes out like this every single time. Okay. I think in, uh, let's say, 1,250,000 words or whatever less, uh, hopefully you guys have learned a lot, specifically with this brand that, like I say, is occasionally when a company comes along and says that they're, they're, they are unique, occasionally it's really true. And that's what I'm trying to pull out of Tom, as well as my own experience in using these products and try to deliver to you guys. It's like, oh my gosh, what took the industry so long? So until next time, guys, always check the uh, links below. If you like what you're seeing, give it a thumbs up. I can't respond to every comment, of course but I do have a guy on the side that, that reviews your comments. So by all means, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think, and we will see you on the next video.